Hello class. Um, hope everybody did well on the test yesterday. Um, I should have those created and submitted into Power Schools by the end of the week. Um, so we're going to continue with the next topic. Um, the next, and this is technically the final topic for pure math, and it's called integration. Um, so this will be. We'll start off with chapter 16. Um, I believe it's 16 and 17. Um, so integration um, has a few uses. Um, one is called the antiderivative. Um, antiderivative is actually another name for integration, um, but we use it for basically undoing a de uh, derivatives. Also, it's used for finding areas and def what's called definite integrals. So this is all in chapter 16, so these are kind of like the applications of integration. And then chapter 17 will be um, its own type of um, application that we'll look at separately. Okay, so here is what ACE says. Um, so basically this is like the goals that ACE wants for integration. I understand that integration is a reverse process of differentiation and how to integrate this. So remember if you take a derivative of this, it was... Um, basically what we call kind of the chain rule. Um, so basically we have to know how to do the antiderivative of that. Um, solving problems, so basically just finding equations. Um, if you're given the derivative, remember the derivative is the same thing as a slope. So basically if you're given a point and a slope, find the equation of a line. Uh, doing definite integrals, so that, that, what that means is basically evaluating these. So see how they give you numbers here? We'll look at those later. And this is chapter 17. This is, no, this one is a uh, part of 16. It's at the end. And this is chapter 17. Okay, but um, today we'll kind of start off uh, really easy, keep it simple, and just basically give you an introduction to antiderivatives. Okay, integration, antiderivatives. So remember, if you wanted to go, for, if you have a function and you wanted to find the prime, or or its derivative, that's what we call the derivative. So integration is basically the reverse of that. If you're given the derivative and you want to find the function. Okay, so that's what integration is useful for. Um, here is the rule. So this is like the rules I gave you for differentiation. Um, it basically tells you how to integrate x to any power. So this is just a, a general rule, like a formula. So the answer for this would be 1 over whatever n is plus 1, and then you just raise the power by 1. So remember, derivatives, you multiplied whatever the exponent was, you brought it down to multiply it, and then you subtracted 1. Okay, that was a derivative. So this is anti-derivative. So that means you do the opposite. So instead of bringing this down and multiplying it, we're going to bring it down and divide it. And then instead of subtracting 1, we add 1. Um, the symbol is going to be this. It looks kind of like a really long stretched out S. Um, if you were doing it on lined paper, this would actually extend above and below one line on notebook paper. Okay, so it's a pretty big symbol. This is kind of the same thing as like what dy dx meant for derivatives. That's kind of what this means for integration. Okay, so if we wanted to integrate x to the n, we would write it like this. Okay, so you got to know how to read this, just like how to read derivatives. dy dx meant derivative of y with respect to x. So this has this means the integration of this function with respect to x. Okay, dx still means with respect to the variable x. And then once you do that integration, that would be your answer. Okay, so if this was x squared, the answer would be 1 third x to the third. Okay, so we'll look at some examples um, as to how to use that. So integrate the following. So we have 5x. So integration of 5x with respect to x. So we can use that rule and you can just plug in the rule. So the power here, I'm just going to rewrite it. So what's our exponent here? Our exponent here is 1. Okay, so it becomes the 5 stays out front, 
we divide by whatever this is, we add 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay? And then we add 1 to the exponent. Okay? So that's pretty much it. So here's why that's called the antiderivative. Okay? So let's take this 5 halves x squared. Find the derivative of that. Remember how to derivative? You take 2, you bring it down. 2 times 5 halves, and then you subtract 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. And that cancels, and we're just left with 5x. Okay, so that's why this is called the antiderivative. So if you take the derivative of this and get that, and if we integrated that, we'll get what we originally started with. Okay, so it's opposite. So the 5 stays here. You bring the 2 down to multiply it and subtract 1. Same scenario, but it's opposite. So you bring the 1 down and you add 1, but instead of multiplying it, like we did here, we divide it. And then you add 1 to your exponent. Okay, hopefully that made some sense. Let's try it again. Let's try another one. So we have integration of 7z squared. Uh, that actually should be a z. Sorry, with respect to the variable z. Okay, so following the, the rules, we take 2, we're going to add 1, and then we divide by that same thing. So that's really all you do. So you get 7 over 3, z to the third. Okay. So if you're okay with that one, try this one on your own real quick. I'm, of course, going to go over it. Integration of 2x plus 4. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite it here. Integration of 2x plus 4 with respect to x. So just like when you're doing derivatives and you have two terms, you do the derivative of each term separately. Same thing for integration. No matter how many terms you have, you just integrate each term separately. So just integrate 2x plus and then whatever integration of 4 is. Okay? So let's integrate 2x. So you can almost think of this as two separate integration problems. Okay, so something like that. Okay, so what's the integration of 2x? So our power is 1. Right, so we're going to add 1. And we divide by that. So we get 2 over 2 x squared plus hey, what's our power here? There is no x, right? So that means that's x to the 0 basically. So we add 1. And we divide by that. So we get 4 over 1 x to the 1. Which just simplifies to x squared plus 4. Okay. Flip that over again really carefully. You add 1 to the exponent, and that's the new exponent. And then whatever that number is, you just divide by that number. Okay, it, it really is that simple when integrating individual terms. Okay, hopefully that made sense. So now that we know how to integrate, we're just going to look at this one little example here. And um, this is where this uh, will lead to. So find the equation of the line that passes through the point 2, 3, and that has the derivative 6x squared plus 5. So remember, derivative is kind of like your slope. Hopefully you remember that. That's like your slope. Okay. So if we have a value for x, we can plug in. Oops. So we have a value for x that we can plug into. We can get... Um, an actual slope value. So if we plug in 2 to here, we have 6, 2 squared minus 5 times 2. So that's 4, that's 24 minus 10, so that's 14. That's our slope. And then we have this point. Okay, the other way, and then you can use equation of line formula. But the other way to do it using derivatives, okay, is Basically, we don't even need this point 
we can just integrate this to get the equation of a line. Okay, so integrate each term separately. Add one to here, that gives us a three. Okay, and then I'll divide six by that three, so that gives me a two. Minus, my exponent here is one, so I add one, that gives me x squared, and then I divide by two. So I get that. Okay, so that's pretty much y. Now if you were to plug in this slope and this point, you wouldn't get the same answer. You would not get a cubic. Okay, This would only give you the slope at that point. So this was a quadratic. So remember quadratics like this. So the slope gives you basically the slope at that point. Whereas this, oops, sorry, this gives you the equation of the entire curve. Okay. So that's the difference between doing it the way we did it way back in coordinate geometry versus using integration. Coordinate geometry, you find the equation of a line of just a straight line. Now with integration, you can actually find the equation of a whole curve. Okay, so this is a cubic, so this is the equation for the whole curve. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Um, that's all we're going to do for today. Um, the major thing today is just know how to take individual derivatives. Okay, we'll get more into this stuff um, probably starting tomorrow. Okay. If you have any questions on this or if you need a little bit more explanation, just message me on Teams. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.